This is Carlene Pettit. She is an international Airbus A350 pilot who is type rated and has flown on and also instructed on the A350 as well as the A330, the Boeing 777, 747, 757, 767, 737, and the 727. She is a veteran airline pilot with over 40 years of experience who has flown for such historic airlines as Coastal Airways, Braniff, Premier, America West, Guyana, Tower Air, and Northwest Airlines and currently flies an Airbus A350. She is the mother of three daughters and a grandmother of eight and holds a PhD and two master's degrees. She lives in Seattle with her husband of 40 plus years and is extremely active in promoting safety within the airline industry. She's active in general aviation, speaks at schools, and supports aviation dreamers of all ages. And if that wasn't enough, Carlene is an accomplished author who has penned multiple books on aviation safety and has even written fictional thrillers. So it's safe to say Carlene Pettit may be one of the world's most accomplished pilots, especially as a female pilot, because unfortunately it's still a very male-dominated occupation. So then what possibly could this woman have done to Delta Airlines to make them so angry to take the most drastic of steps and fire her? And not only that, but Delta also spent millions of dollars in court to make sure she stayed fired. And so desperate was Delta Airlines to make sure that they got rid of this woman. They even hired and paid a doctor to outright lie and perjure himself in court about her mental health in order to justify her firing. Well then, surely this woman must be guilty of some quite nefarious deeds indeed. Well, get ready, because I'm going to tell you this amazing, true, and troubling story. Next, on Maximus. Greetings, everybody, Maximus here. The true story I'm about to tell you is sure to be made into a movie one day. And when that happens, you can say you heard about it here first on Maximus. Now I know as YouTube viewers, sometimes we like to just skip ahead and skip through the videos. I do too. But I would urge you not to skip ahead in this one. Because every twist and turn in this story needs to be heard. And besides, you'll be glad you did. As usual, this incredible story came to my attention by way of the best aviation writer in the business, Dominic Gates at the Seattle Times. It was Christmas Eve 2016. Carlene Pettit, an international long-haul pilot for Delta Airlines, was doing the usual things you do on Christmas Eve. And in her case, I'm pretty sure she was busy wrapping gifts for her three children and eight grandchildren, maybe putting the finishing touches on the eggnog or writing a new book. But as she was going through the day's mail and Christmas cards, she noticed an envelope from her employer, Delta Airlines. But instead of receiving a Christmas bonus or even a Christmas card with a Starbucks gift certificate inside, this Christmas, Carlene Pettit received a devastating letter from her employer, Delta. A letter that threatened to end her career. You see, Pettit had been grounded by Delta earlier that year in March of 2016, pending an evaluation by a hand-picked, Delta-assigned, bought-and-paid-for doctor. The letter informed Carlene of his official diagnosis of his evaluation of her. In his letter, he informed her that it was his opinion that she was mentally unfit for duty, and not only that, but that she should never be permitted to fly again. By this stage in her career, Pettit had been flying commercial jets for 35 years. She raised three children, earned a doctorate and two master's degrees, and wrote a series of books which you can find on Amazon and in bookstores all over the world. And she accomplished all these amazing feats while still performing perfectly as a pilot for Delta Airlines. It was early in November of the previous year that Carlene had sent emails to her superiors critical of Delta safety culture, which immediately provoked a series of interactions with Delta management about safety issues. But six days later, Captain Jim Graham, then Delta's vice president of flight operations, sent an email to a pilot manager who worked under him, indicating that he and Delta Airlines were going to put a stop to Pettit's critiques of the airline, and they were going to shut her up for good. 
And they were going to do it using a draconian and illogical process called the Section 15. But what exactly would this mysterious and ominous Section 15 mean for Carlene Pettit? Well, it would be an actual 21st century scarlet letter. But more importantly to Delta Airlines, it would label Carlene mentally unstable to ever be a pilot again. In his email to management, Delta's Vice President Graham said we should consider whether a Section 15 is appropriate. This Neanderthal VP actually wrote, and I'm quoting, that if she couldn't embrace and understand the reason behind our actions, it stands to reason she might not be able to make appropriate decisions for the safe operation of a flight. The doctor, Dr. David Altman, and I use the term doctor loosely, hired by Delta for $74,000, produced the necessary diagnosis. A diagnosis that Delta paid him $74,000 to ensure that he would find. So in 2016, he evaluated Pettit as having bipolar disorder. Now you might want to sit down for this next part, because this quack Altman later testified that his diagnosis was driven in part by Pettit's accomplishments. He stated that the writing of all the books, the degrees, the piloting job, plus doing all of that while at the same time raising kids was, quote, well beyond what any woman I've ever met could do. Thus, his diagnosis was that Carlene Pettit was, now wait for it, he said this proved Carlene Pettit was manic. Holy crap, this guy reminds me of the doctor in the Johnny Depp trial. You remember this guy. However, Dr. Altman's diagnosis was not only completely fraudulent, but it was the fact that he added that because she was a woman, it made her even more incapable of such feats of strength, and he swore to it under oath that made this so egregious, intimating that only men could be such high achievers, because in his caveman opinion, it's impossible for a woman to have the same drive to succeed as a man. So because of this extraordinary Delta Airlines sham process, this brought down the full weight of the largest airline in the world to bear on Pettit. As a result, Pettit was grounded. Let me say that again. She was grounded because she was just too damn amazing. Well, now it looked like her career as a pilot was over. And worse, her reputation would be ruined. At least that's what Delta thought. Because in addition to being an amazing pilot, mom, grandmother and author, Carlene Pettit was also one hell of a fighter. And fight back she did. Carlene immediately got to work suing Delta and its management, not only for the return of the job she loved, but also for the return of her stellar, unblemished reputation. During the trial, internal Delta management emails revealed in Discovery tell the story. Back in late 2015, Carlene, who has a doctorate in aviation safety from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, listened to Delta's then-CEO Richard Anderson in a keynote speech say that it was the duty of all employees to speak up if they were aware of safety issues. Well, it just so happened that such concerns were the exact subject of the PhD thesis she was then working on. It was after Delta CEO's keynote address stating that it was the duty of Delta employees to speak up if they were aware of any safety issues that Pettit began requesting meetings with her supervisors at Delta, including Graham and his boss, Senior Vice President of Flight Operations, Steve Dixon. Yes, the same Steve Dixon, who would later be appointed the head of the Federal Aviation Administration. So in early 2016, Pettit presented a report to Deltas, Dixon, and Graham, listing a series of lapses, including an analysis of some nearly catastrophic incidents. It was in that march that Graham pulled the trigger on her Section 15 and referred Pettit for a mental health evaluation from quack Dr. Altman, with whom the company had quite a long relationship. But the Section 15 process allows for the accused pilot to select an independent medical examiner. And if that doctor disagrees with the company's doctor, they have to agree on a third-party neutral examiner to decide the case. So Pettit engaged a panel of nine medical doctors from the Mayo Clinic's Aerospace Medicine Department 
And of course, they concluded unanimously that she in fact did not have bipolar disorder, nor any other psychiatric disorder whatsoever. Dr. Lauren Steinkraus of the Mayo Clinic testified that Altman's diagnosis was a quote, puzzle for our group. Steinkraus testified the evidence does not support the presence of a psychiatric diagnosis, but does support an organization and corporate conspiracy to remove this pilot from the roles. When the neutral doctor backed the Mayo Clinic doctors, Pettit had to be reinstated. But in the meanwhile, Pettit had also filed a whistleblower complaint. And it was then that something truly astonishing happened that helped Pettit's case considerably. The Chicago-based quack fraud Dr. Altman forfeited his medical license in 2020 rather than face criminal charges from the Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulation over his conduct of psychiatric exams in the case of two Delta pilots, one of whom was Pettit. In December of 2020, Judge Morris delivered a scathing ruling that accused Delta of weaponizing the Section 15 process to silence internal dissent. He noted of Pettit's ability as a pilot that not a single witness questioned her flying acumen. The judge called Graham's testimony of dubious credibility. Judge Morris awarded Pettit the $500,000 in compensation after considering not only the harm to her reputation, but the embarrassment and emotional hardship she has endured over an extended period of time, and also the realistic loss of future opportunities for promotion. This judge was awesome. I love this part. The judge also ordered Delta to prominently post copies of his decision at every pilot base in the world so that its more than 13,000 pilots would see it. Morris also ordered that Pettit be reinstated with the highest wages of any Delta first officer and be made whole for the lost flying time. And so Carlene Pettit lived happily ever after, right? Wrong. Because Delta spent millions of dollars appealing the case, still insisting Pettit was unfit to fly. So then what happened? Well, finally now, Carlene can live happily ever after. Because Delta Airlines lost its appeal and lost big. Because this past October of 2022, the final settlement of Pettit's case after a six and a half year legal battle sealed a comprehensive loss for Delta and a rare instance of complete vindication for a whistleblower. So Administrative Law Judge Scott Morris upheld his earlier order characterizing Delta's use of the psychiatric diagnosis as an abuse of a mental evaluation system in place for cases of last resort. Morris ruled it improper for Delta to weaponize this procedure for the purposes of obtaining blind compliance by its pilots. Delta must pay Pettit $500,000 as compensation, plus years of all of her legal fees. Yet, even after discrediting Delta's quack doctor and losing the case, Delta didn't discipline any employees for deploying their Soviet-style psychiatric examination to try and silence Pettit. In response to a request for comment, the dirtbags at Delta provided a statement that made no apology whatsoever and admitted no wrongdoing. Delta spokesperson Catherine Morrow wrote in an email, We made a business decision to settle the matter rather than appeal a decision that we disagreed with. She added Delta's fitness for duty testing process for pilots is in place to ensure safety and it works. But Pettit's attorney said, I don't know that the message to the Delta pilots is anything other than keep your mouth shut, he said. That an airline can act with that level of impunity is troubling. He said because you can't have a safe airline if pilots are afraid. Still Pettit who never yielded to the pressure is now back flying international routes for Delta out of Seattle. She's been back flying since the independent doctors finally discredited Altman's diagnosis in 2017. And maybe someday if you happen to fly Delta out of Seattle to London or Paris on an Airbus A330, rest easy knowing that Carlene Pettit may just be your pilot. So when is the last time you heard of someone being fired for being too freaking awesome? Yeah, me either. But as for Delta, nothing seems to have changed. They still stand by their decision. So maybe the next time you're booking a flight, you may want to choose your airline wisely. That is, unless you're sure Carlene Pettit is your pilot. 
Well, that's going to wrap it up for now. So what did you think of this amazingly true and troubling story? Please be sure to let me know down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.